So today we are going to have a review for the first exam. The way I'm going to go through is just pick a sample uh, test. It's like practice exam, right? I just want to make sure, uh, let you know, because those are questions will be automatically pulled from anticipating. And it's a question you're going to see may slightly different from what I'm going to show you today. But nevertheless, those uh, cover the same material and in the same format, right? Let's go through one by one. If you have any questions, so you can just um, contact me anytime. Right. Let's start with question number one. In 2008 and the 2009 recession, the government deficit. The correct answer is increased. And why the deficit increase in the recession? This actually reflects the basic macroeconomic theory. During recession, the aggregate demand decline, the economic activity slowed down. And then the government usually what they're going to do is going to have some expansion of fiscal policy, usually reduce tax and increase government spending. That leads to the government deficit to increase. Now, question two, true or false? Unemployment at the aggregate level is a part of well-functioning economy. The answer is, it is correct. Okay. So based on new classical macroeconomic theory, unemployment is a natural response of our economy to some exogenous shock, right? And unemployment in some sense is necessary. Right? So now go to question three. Improvement in the country's standard of living are brought about in the long run. The correct answer should be technological progress, right? Because the technological progress, that is the only way you can generate sustainable long-run growth, right? So immigration policy, it can help to improve standard living, but this is not going to be a source of long-run growth. And similarly, construction of more machine and buildings, and so that's the essential that brings more physical capital, but that's going to subject to the diminishing return to physical capital. The growth in population, that's yes, it helps. Right? Why? There are more people, it's going to bring more idea. But on the other hand, or conversely, so growth in population or more people in the economy is going to dilute the physical capital or resource so that it can drag down economic growth. Now go to question four, truth or false? As an ad in studying business cycle, it helps to separate real GDP per capita into its seasonal and that trend component. This is not correct. Actually, it's a correct way to separate real GDP per capita is separate into trend plus cyclical, not seasonal. Yeah, seasonal, it just means changing season, right? So for example, during the holiday season, the demand is strong, right? So the output usually will keep up. But a cyclical, it just means the economic growth or economic activity deviates from its long-term trend. It's a little bit different. Now go to question five. Which period was not a recession in the United States? So this is like, a, this is a facts-based question, right? The so answer is this one. 1984 to 1985. Right, so you may want to look into the textbook to understand or kind of memorize and understand what caused each of those episodes of recession in the US economy. Right. So there, there wasn't much, probably like less than 10 since World War II. 
as a big example, see here, so we have 1974 and 1975, that was caused by the oil crisis. In 1990 and 1991, that was caused by the war. Uh, in 2001, it's caused by there are two things. One is the um, dot com bust, the other is 9 11. Now, go to question six more government spending. The correct answer, the correct answer is. A can compete with private spending and cause crowding up. Why this is essentially so government spending is going to use some of the resource, but certainly yes, government spending it may help to generate larger size of GDP, right? But still, as a matter of fact. It's going to compete with private spending and it's going to lead to crowding out of private spending. Right. Now let's look at option two. It increased government surplus is opposite, right? So the government surplus equal to the tax revenue minus spending. If spending increase and then surplus is going to decrease. Right. So the second now third option. It just mirrors each other. It's always beneficial, not, not necessary, right? Sometimes when we're in a deep recession, and now in a particular, when the government knows how to use the money wisely or put in the right use, yes, that's gonna be beneficial, but not always. Now question seven, true or false? According to real business cycle theory, the primary cause of business cycle are technology shock. Yes, that's exactly the main theory about a real business cycle. What causes the fluctuation of our economy? It is some exogenous technology shock. Sometimes can be positive, sometimes can be negative. Positive example, like, 2000 or nine, uh, 1990. So we have the popular, popular, popularization of computer or computerization of our workforce or workplace. And then right now we are in the era of artificial intelligence, and many economists was expecting this going to bring us tremendous technology progress. So those are examples. Now, question eight, which aspect of macroeconomics generates the most controversial? So the answer is B, the cost of busy cycle, right? Supply demand as kind of from microeconomic growth is pretty clear. We need some technology progress in the long run. Competitive equilibrium is also from micro, right? So everyone behave on their best interest. Like the market is gonna clear. The cause of business cycle. So they have different belief, different thought of the school, right? Like in this class, we primarily focus on new classical, meaning, so we believe here, we believe this is like a real business cycle, real business cycle theory. Okay? This is one school of thought that explains the cause of business cycle. And they believe it's technology shock, but there's like a new Keynes, they believe. Maybe there's a coordination failure. So now question nine. In 2014, the per capita GDP in the US in 2005 dollar was about, so the answer is 50,000. Okay. So yes, this can be a little bit tricky to answer these questions, right? But that's again, for students majoring in economics and for you study intermediate macro, it's better to have the basic knowledge about some facts regarding to US economy. Like this one and the earlier one we talk about which year we do have recession and which year we don't have recession. Right? So those are basic facts right, for macroeconomics. So now question 10, 
what do you do we assume about household and firms? So the answer is they optimize. And actually, there are different ways to answer this question. So usually we assume they are perfect competition. Okay. Or sometimes we say we assume there are many households. That's the equivalent to there's perfect competition. All right. And furthermore, we assume they're rational. They optimize. They behave on their best interests. All right. So that's kind of so this is not great. They they actually they act rationally. They look after each other. No, they just they, they behave on their best interest. But interestingly, if there's no other friction, if the market is perfect, and then so indeed, even though they behave on their best interest, but collectively we reach the best outcome possible. Right. And third, they do what the government tell them to do. No, so usually they observe the policy from the government, and then they behave on their best interest or the optimize. Now, question eleven: the expenditure component of GDP include or of the following except. So the answer is going to be C: net export. Right, so that just coming from expenditure. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's going to be um, B, net factor of payment, right? So the GDP equals C plus I plus G plus NX, right? So investment I, net export, NX, consumption, and also you have government spending. Now, question 12 GDP is a stock. The answer is. No, right. So GDP is not a stock, right? It's a flow. Okay. Now, question thirteen: Change in related price cross profits in measure in real GDP because. So the answer is C. Consumer substitute relatively cheaper good for ones that. Have become relatively more costly. So that just means when price change, you may looking for cheaper alternatives. Right. So that's that's how you respond. But that's going to create some problems when you when we measure real GDP. Because how we measure real GDP, right? Remember how we measure real GDP. Okay, so you look at the formula. But usually, so the way we look at, we measure real GDP, just as usually we assume a fixed bundle of goods. But in reality, consumer is going to adjust their behavior as a response to price change. Now, question 14. Here's what we know about households. Wage 25,000, unemployment insurance benefit 3,000, Individual income four, income tax five. What is the contribution of GDP of these households following the expenditure approach? Okay. So the expenditure approach, basically, we should look at, we should look at the total expenditure. So here, the answer, the correct answer. Is going to be twenty eight thousand. So it is larger because so this is wage income and insurance benefit. That's kind of labor income, right? So this is going to go to expenditure, right? So tax is just, they pay goes to the government, right? So dividend income that just goes to the uh, firms, right? So it's twenty five plus three thousand. That is the that is the contribution of the households. Right. Question 15. GDP inaccurately measure 
the value of aggregate output because it may not properly account for the answer is D, the last one. Production in the underground economy and the true value of government production. So what's the problem of production in underground economy? Usually it is it happens without properly documenting and not coming to GDP. What's the problem of the government production? Because usually there's no market for government production. The a good example is national defense. There's no market for national defense. Hence, its value is not market value, or we don't know the true value. Right. The other problem of GDP is that it doesn't measure in the in-house production. Like, say, for example, so many of us may have done some housekeeping work, right? So without the help from professional, I right? say, so for example, you fix your house. You clean your house, mow your yard lawn, right? Fix a car, right? So those actually create some values, okay? But because we just fix ourselves without paying the professionals to do that, even though it has value, it has market value, but it's not it's not properly count, accounted. Hence, the GDP may underestimate the actual level of economic activity. All right, so this is question 15. Again, answer is D. Question 16. Additions to the national capital output are brought about through, so the answer is going to be investment. Right, so we invest, so that's going to build up capital stock. All right, so that's going to lead to the growth but again, the, the investment is not going to sustain long run economic growth. In the short term or even in the mid run, it helps. But in the long run, we realize our technology progress. Right. Question 17 Suppose that the government collect 3 million tax pay two million in social security, pay half million in interest on national debt and pay worker one million. The government contribution to GDP. So the here, only this one million, only this one million counts as GDP. So this two is considered as transfer. It's not government spending. Right, because the government gives you without any goods and service being pro uh, provided. And it is half million that just pay the interest is cause of the debt, right? And only this one million, you pay workers like federal or state uh, employees, you pay one million and as a return, your workers is gonna provide goods and service. But this goods and service essentially, it eventually goes to GDP. Hence, the government's contribution to GDP equal to 1 million in question 17. Okay. Now it goes to question 18. Question 18. We know the following about a tire manufacturer. Sales 1,300. Cotton purchase 750. Wage 400. Interest 100. Profit 50. What is the contribution? Okay, so basically we need to look at the value added, right? So the, the value added coming from, so this is the sales, their revenue, subtract to the intermediate goods they use, right? So that's gonna give you 550. Okay, 1,300 minus 750 equal to 550, right? So now go to question, 19. Suppose we have the following information about car manufacturer. Sales 100, still purchase 600, wage 300, interest 50, profit 50. What is the contribution to GDP using the product approach? Very clear, right? Similar to the previous one. 
1,000 minus 600, right? So that's the product approach, equal to 400. But if we can also use, use what? Use income approach. Then that's going to be 300. That's income to labor. 50, that's income to capital. Profit, that's own income to ownership. So these three are equal to 400. Right, so you can look at two different approach, product or income approach. Right, so this is 19. Now go to question 20. The income expenditure identity is based, paraphrased as the correct answer is A, or the first one, or spending generates income. Or income, or the income goes to expenditure. Expenditure goes to income. Any each dollar I spend, it becomes somebody else's income. All right. So now go to question twenty-one. Robert Lucas has popularized the notion that, with respect to the correct answer, is the last one. Okay. Qualitative behavior of co movement among serious business cycle are all alike. Essentially, he, he popularized the idea of revisit cycle theory and he also contributed the rational expectation idea in macroeconomics. Question 22. A reverse Phillips curve would consist of the answer is this one negative relationship between deviation of trend in price and the level of aggregate economic activity. So essentially, this is about a Phillips curve. The Phillips curve shows the correlation between level of price and unemployment. Right. So now question 23, real investment tends to this one, pro-cyclical and more variable than real GDP. What this means? This just means real investment usually increase during economic boom and it decreases during recession. Right. Not only that, or Additionally, it, the fluctuation in real investment is much more significant compared with real GDP. Let's go to the first part. Why it is a pro-cyclical? When economy is in expansion, the house or business, clearly certain, obviously, they have incentive to invest, to expand so that they can have bigger production capacity to make more profit. Conversely, when we are in a recession, economic activity starts to contract. And then it doesn't make much sense for you to invest. You want to shrink your investment by right, to prevent further loss. But why if it's more volatile compared with real GDP? This is because the investment is kind of leading indicator. It's gonna take a while to realize. I mean, because first you need to invest, investment becomes capital, and then capital used to production. So hence, usually it's fluctuated more, right? Why? Because, okay, so when there's, a, when there's a expansion, right? So you want to invest and in, in, uh, expand your business. So usually, because you are very optimistic, you open to invest a lot. Right? On the other hand, when there's a recession, so you want to avoid the loss, and then you start to you start to shrink your investment, shrink the size of your capital. Right. So hence that's why it fluctuates more than real GDP. Now, question twenty four: average labor productivity is computed as the ratio of real GDP to the level of employment. Or in other words, average lab, uh, labor productivity is computed as a per worker real GDP. Or in other words, 
to just compute as how many goods and service each worker can produce. This is average labor activity. This is 24. Now 25, which of the following is not a correct correct addition of the US business cycle? Right. The correct answer is D, or in other words, only this one is not the right correct addition of the US business cycle. Uh, indeed, average labor productivity is pro-cyclical, meaning when economy is in the boom, the average labor productivity increase. When economy is in a recession, average labor productivity decline. Right? Other thing we should know is that wage is pro-cyclical. In the recession, wage decline. In the expansion, wage increase. Similar for employment. And a consumption is coincidental, meaning that's exactly follow the business cycle. Right. So now 26, forecasting the future path of real GDP by exploiting past statistical relationship. So the answer is D, that it can be combined by the construction and use of the index of leading variable. So now here I just tells you your understanding regarding to leading indicator or variables, coincident variables, lagging variables. So what is leading variable? I mean, say if X is a leading variable regarding to Y, meaning X is going to change before Y. And particularly, so the direction of X change of the, the the direction of change in X is going to tell you the direction of change of Y. On the other hand, lagging variable. So if you get them X is a lagging variable of Y, meaning so X move after Y. So in that sense, that's not a good, good way to predict what's going on for Y or in real GDP. Right? Hence, answer is D. You want to look at the leading variable how this leading variable moves or change. So that gives you a sense what the economy is going to head into. So now question 27, if the correlation between GDP and a variable Y is negative, and then usually we say this is counter cyclical. What is pro cyclical? Meaning it's positive, it's moving in the same direction. What is acyclical? Meaning it's close to zero. All right, meaning so they are really not, they are really not uh, correlated. Tricyclical, I really don't know what that means. Maybe there's like a cycle, right? So 28, which of the following is not a correct correlation of US business cycle? So this is not the way to look at US business cycle. The correct answer is A, actually consumption and the GDP, they are coincidental. Meaning, so they move in the same time. And now it's a good time to look at the other things. Investment is coincidental, it's changing the same time. Employment is behind GDP. Usually GDP drops after GDP decline. Right? Consumption is coincidental. I just replaced A. Right? So hence answer is A. Only A is not the correct characterization of the US business cycle. Now we move to question 29. If deviation from trend in macroeconomic variable are negatively correlated, then we say as obvious, right? So we call this counter cyclical. So question 30, question 30. Phillips curve, it tends to be, so the answer is, hard to find in the data and unstable. But again, so you may want to review what is Phillips curve. 